I, I did a video, I think it's the one you're talking about, where as, as teachers, our job is not just to, okay, here's the information we're teaching tonight, we're teaching these three techniques, this punching combination, all right, good, next class. It's to, can you ignite a passion? Can you get somebody who, a kid who's, or an adult, uh, can you get them excited about wanting to be up front in front of everybody to lead, to be able to lead, even to demonstrate because they worked their ass off to get there. Hello, welcome to the Martial Arts Lifestyle. This is James Cox and we are episode number 47. Today I have a special guest with me all the way in from the uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area. This is Mr. David Pentano. Uh, Pentano, Pentana, you probably get called a lot of things. Oh, okay, Pentano. With, with the O. Uh, premier martial arts, lifelong martial artist, uh, Kenpo martial artist, high ranking. And, you know, I look at David as a self-defense and a leadership expert. So I, I listen to some of the videos and things you put up, like-minded, but we want to talk about a lot today and kind of get your thoughts and opinions on what can we do, man? How can we make this world a better place? Because, you know, we're trying to do that in a nutshell, right? But if you want to introduce yourself, sir, tell us a little bit about your journey. Started training in Marshall 18 and uh, some guy came up to me and basically grabbed my wrists. And uh, if you're a boxer, that's pretty much all you had. So that's, I decided that I needed to expand my weapons arsenal. And uh, I fell into Kempo uh, after seeing a movie called The Perfect Weapon. And shortly afterwards, fell into, uh, did, started doing Krav Maga along with it. Um, I love it. It's been a great journey. It's, uh, it's, it's something I would never trade. I would never, I'm very grateful that this is in my life. Yeah, definitely, right? Jeff Speakman, yeah, I remember, man. Everybody was doing Star Block set and Kimpo after that, right? Yeah. <laughs> some weapons training. So in, in all these years, I mean, let's start off with, with some things. What, what would you say is maybe some of the best and even the worst parts of martial arts and your experiences with it in general? Let's, I'll start with the worst part first. Uh, the, the worst part is, you know, see the ugly side of, of uh the martial arts industry which is the, the ego side i think probably aside from the medical field you have probably some of the biggest egos ever and you have a lot of small people wearing big rank um you know i remember i was at a tournament one time and this guy was just walking around with the jacket and it was just a very windbreaker and it said master and his name on it. like why would you have to talk about that and it, it if you've gotten your point yourself to a point of recognition and stuff that's great doctor should be called doctor you can call someone sensei but when i see them walking around that like they're on a whole other level from everybody else and it's I, I find that kind of disgusting especially when they're not even good martial artists they're just hiding behind rank you know i've seen people change uh start their own system about themselves because they made certain changes here and there because they didn't want to learn the system itself and uh the whole idea of martial arts is it's this lifelong journey of trying to become better than you've ever been. It's, it's like, it's, it's school for the rest of your life. I think some people have just ugly it up and given a bad name to it for everybody else. I think um, the, the best thing about martial arts, the martial arts uh, industry and just being in martial arts is the people I've met. I have met, my best friends are all martial artists, just about every single one of them. And just, just wonderful people I've met through here, my students, everybody, I'm, I'm blessed. So I, I would say, aside from the gift of being able to defend myself, it, it's uh, given me the you know a great circle of friends, and it's also given me a career which most of my friends hate their jobs. I love going to work every day. Who can say yeah. that? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, what what a blessing, right? And it is it is funny, man. All, yeah. all the the good, the bad, the ugly, all the differences there. I see it as well, man. Martial artists yeah, sometimes right. the. The bigger their belt, literally, the higher their rank, the bigger their belt, or the smaller it gets because of the weight they gained. <laughs> but sometimes the ego and the pride that goes along with that. An instructor that will will correct people if, you know, hey, how you doing, David? Oh, it's Grandmaster, you know. I mean, oh, somebody, I'm so sorry. Let me kiss yeah, you. Yeah, they want to call you that. <clears throat> That's fine. But to, to give me 10 push-ups and call me by this, you know, it's a little little extreme. Um, with that rank and pride. And like you said, are, are you able to really back up what you know to get to a level where you don't really feel that you have a need to prove yourself to someone because you're a martial artist from the inside out? So uh, best best parts overall, the people you've met, the the relationships, yeah, the same way here. Uh, sometimes the, the pride and ego that goes along with that, right? Yeah, yeah. it's not as good. I, I've, had, I've had a chance to travel. I've, I've taught in other countries now, which is really great. And, you know, it's, 
it, it's given me a platform. I mean, it's given me it's where a lot of people are. This is going to sound wrong, I guess, but where a lot of people are just kind of grouped into a crowd. This is giving me a chance to stand out and, you know, uh, and be a leader, which I enjoy being very much. It's very challenging. I'm not perfect. Far from it. I like that I can, you know, go out and I'm being asked to teach other places because I found something that I'm really good at. Like there's a book by the Gallup group. It's called Strengths. And it says that most 70 percent of people in, in, in the country are not at, in a job where they get to play to their strengths. And think of it as martial artists, you know, teachers especially, this is our strength and we, we get to do, ex we're exactly where we're supposed to be if we're teaching, you know, and that's your stage. You're working with people, these people, like I come out there at night uh, for my last class at night, which is my adult class, and there's 35 to 40 adults, all professionals, law enforcement, teachers, millionaires, you know, regular people. And I'm just like, it's weird. I'm like, they're here for me. This is very, and then the pressure's on. And the fact that I get nervous or I, I, I never take it for granted. Every night I walk out in the parking lot, I thank God every night for blessing me with it. Honestly, I do because it's just, it's amazing. So yeah, aside from the self defense, it's the people. You, you have, you're surrounded by like-minded people who want to get better and share your passion. You know, we're not arguing about, people argue about everything these days on Facebook, <laughs> you know? And these people just, I mean, like during COVID, there were people begging me, they were saying they were so sad, they missed the school. It's not even like the gym. It's just they miss the the, the culture. Everything that we build at, 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 as as instructors in our dojo. These are our own houses, and you know these are people who live with us in our house. I, I think it's just it's quite unique. It is very unique. How many people get to do that for a living? Yeah, you don't know having you don't know what you really have until it's gone. And you know the whole quarantine lockdown time is. Uh, something that we realize and you know that appreciation and gratitude for it. but it is cool man look 30 or 40 different people they're there for common things you know to feel good if it's self-defense peace of mind fitness social belonging all of those benefits but they're also different as well right yeah, absolutely. All, all different walks and types and yeah yeah we have to uh, be ready to put to, to shine put that show on and pour your heart and your soul behind it. Yeah, I've seen some things that you've put out. I follow some of your videos on leadership and you were talking recently also about students quitting and why do they quit the martial arts and what we can do to try to keep them in there so that they don't give up on something that is so good for them, so life-changing. Well, it's interesting. Like, it's funny you said that because uh, one of my students uh, his his two sons just quit. He he trains. He, his kids started. He trained started training after them. And he said when he was younger, if your father said this is what you're doing, and there's no quitting. People, uh, I think each generation somehow has gotten a little bit weaker and they've and more entitled. And they also feel it's it's oh this is hard. I'm going to stop. And that rubs off on the kids. So it's not that there's bad kids. There's bad parents. Or you know, I mean, a lot of times when you look at kids that quit everything, you, you look at the parents. They let them do that. So I, I think that um, right now, what's what's sad is, I mean, as instructors, I, I did a video. I think it's someone you're talking about. Where as as teachers, our job is not just to okay, here's the information we're teaching tonight. We're teaching these three techniques, this punching combination. All right, good. Next class. It's to can you ignite a passion? Can you get somebody who a kid who's or an adult? Uh, can you get them excited about? wanting to be up front in front of everybody to lead to be able to lead even to demonstrate because they worked their ass off to get there can you get somebody instead of just sitting in the back where it's comfortable can you get somebody to do that and when if you can ignite that and get a kid or an adult that's a gift you just help them get ahead in life even if it's only a little bit um but i think that the reason they quit everything right now is because no one it's acceptable to quit everything it's acceptable to uh, quit because it's hard, you know. It's well, it's okay. Let's just let him slide. No, it's you got to push a kid out of comfort zone. You're 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 the parent. You're not their friend. You're their coach. You're you're giving them a stamp uh, that's in their brain as they get older. Uh, this relationship is hard. I'm gonna leave. This job is hard. I'm gonna leave. My friends are are all moving ahead in life. Oh, it looks like so much work. I'm going to stay back and get some friends that are, you know, are, are, are less competitive. Uh, you know, that's what's really bad about it. That's, so it's our job 
I think that martial arts schools, this sound this sounds really egotistical. I think we are the saving grace in society right now because schools aren't doing very little. They 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 give the standards. You can act any way you want to act, you can do anything you want to do. There's total chaos. In a martial arts school, when is the last time you ever heard a kid curse out a teacher or have chaos on the mat? And, and they do it not because they're scared of the teacher, it's because they know it's the right thing to do. They want to please their parents by having their parents see them behaving. They want to see their, their kids, two classrooms too. They, they get down there fast than everybody because they want to see all their friends that saw them get down before them and get the recognition, thank you for being first. You know, those kind of kids don't quit. Uh, you know, so I, I think that um, in schools, everything, the nor- average is okay. No one pays attention to average. I tell them, I won't pay attention to average. I'll pay attention to you when you work hard. My job is I get paid to teach the class. I'm doing my job. I'll pay attention to you when you start working. And, and, and people work for that attention and recognition. So I think that's what helps kids learn not to quit. They, because life is competitive, you know, and you, you can't shine unless you're working hard. So I, and when kids start doing that, when they get a taste of that, they don't want to quit. You know, name any top competitor athlete. Name, name a successful person, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett. You know, they don't quit. They can quit at any time. They have everything they need. You know, why are we instilling that in our kids? But as martial artists, uh, we do that. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're exactly right. Yeah, I agree, man. Kind of stems back to childhood and habits, parenting, and that we can work as a team. You know, it, it takes a village, right, to raise a child. So if it's martial arts instructor, coach, whatever leader, then uh, we can be there. But we, we have to have that same push and support. Yeah, man, things have changed where there's a little too much softness and no, that, that quitting. I see it, too. You know, somebody quits martial arts for whatever reason and they want to join gymnastics. I run into that same family six months later. Hey, how's gymnastics going? Well, he quit gymnastics. We want to try piano. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah, I think that too. It's martial arts is so beyond. It's it's not an activity. It's not, it's secondary schooling. You're not getting self discipline in school. You're not getting the go getter attitude in school. And when you're in fifth grade, you're not thinking about most kids aren't thinking about college. They're thinking about going outside, doing their thing. You know, they don't. Kids don't think that far into the future in general. But you are raising it's like a good coach on a sports team that that student will that that athlete will remember that coach for the rest of their life they you hear stories about that all the time mm-hmm. and but they're even trying to curb what they can do you're making my kid run too hard that's that's what we do here you know yeah that's why you're soft your kid's soft because you're soft yeah that's why your kid quits everything because you quit everything and really you gotta lead by example I think there's a, a total breakdown, but I think in a martial arts, in a good martial arts school, a quality martial arts school with an instructor that cares, that's created a culture of other students who help lift everybody up, then you're 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 creating people that want to win. But people, it, it's okay to quit some things that you just don't like it. There's no re- or that's not playing to your strengths. That's okay to quit. And you should go where your strengths are. You started this, but you found that that's really your your route. I was gonna, I was going to school because I wanted to be a physical therapist or a school teacher. I'm glad I quit that and did this, but quitting because, well, you really, you like it, but it's hard. Mm -hmm. That is not a reason to quit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we just got to keep doing our part. And maybe it is more of having these type hard conversations, you know, tactful and respectful with the parents, with the adults as well, because adults will do the same thing, you know? Yeah. Um, Yeah. And make that commitment and sticking through it. You're you're not going to see the benefits. It's not that overnight thing you know you don't get to a black belt that quick you don't see the results it, it takes some time and going through yeah how many things everything's fast now you know when we did a research paper went to the library now you can look it up on on on, on your phone every every tick tock 10 second videos 30 second videos you are even movies for kids everything is a quick montage to catch you up there's no development of anything so it's hard to tell people this is going to take time well, what, is, what do you mean by time? Because there's a quick course somewhere, right? There's a there's a there's a pill to become a martial artist. There's an overnight thing somewhere, right? I think I think they said the microwave started all this. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it's all because of the microwave, David. That all of these problems are there. <laughs> so we know what our students uh, go through. We know what we need them to do. That stick to itness, that perseverance, that time and dedication, and to uh, deal with those struggles. Uh, as a martial arts instructor, 
what, what have you learned as long as you've been doing this? Maybe and continue to learn that you didn't expect, right? Because we go through a lot. I know what you go through, and we wear a lot of different hats at times. I mean, you're, you're an instructor. Before you know it, you're a janitor. You're a counselor. You're a salesman. You're you a know. therapist. Yeah, so many things. But what are some things that you've learned as a martial arts instructor that maybe you didn't had expected that you would learn? I didn't realize how much people look to you for help sometimes. It's like you're, it goes beyond kicking a punch. I can't tell you, like, uh, during COVID, people would call me up and confide. I get texts from my students, from adult students, sometimes like 10 o'clock at night, hey, I'm sorry to bother you. I'm really depressed. I'm going through something. Or, hey, I'm thinking about going for another job. What are your thoughts? And I'm like, it, you forget you know, how important you are to them. It, you, and, and it's very humbling when somebody is asking you, what should I do in my life right now? What do you, what do you think? And it's like, that's, that's a heavy question to ask. So I think I didn't realize when I started this when I was 27 years old, I just wanted to go teach. I'm going to teach karate. I'll show my old boss. I, I quit the restaurant. I'm going to, I'm going to make it. I didn't realize, um, the impact you you have on her even even the kids uh you know they they look to you as somebody they can really count on and that is something i think that not all instructors really appreciate i don't think anybody appreciate anybody in a power position and it is a power position if you're a coach of a, a wrestling team they're depending on you you're a coach of a fighter you're a boss of a big business you know they're de they're dependent on you to make sure that job is there the next day but you find out that it goes so much more beyond oh, I'm trying to learn to defend myself or get in shape. They trust you because, you know, really good martial artists or mentors, they read, they go, they see that I go to business seminars, learning how to work with people. We read books on how to work with people. We, I, I, we were always trying to improve ourselves. And that's what I say about the ego thing. There's a lot of people, Oh, I'm this rank now. And you, know, you have to do those things. I don't have to do them anymore. But, when people see that you are working so hard to improve yourself, uh, I guess that that they people look to that. They look to that as as an example, you know. And, and again, that doesn't. I'm not saying we're up here. I'm saying you, you, I'm on the same level as all my students. We're all people. I look. I look. I admire many of them for the things they do. But I think I never expected it to be so much of a relationship and mentor position as it really is kind of like what you see in the movies but you don't think that's really true until you're there mm -hmm. and you're like uh oh, people are asking me serious questions you know even parents right. with my kid i'm like wow <laughs> okay so yeah I hope that, that, that's, that's true. true yeah no that that answers that's true i think early on as a teenage instructor myself the questions were more how to throw that round kick or technical skills how to do that takedown but now the same the same thing man we get these um these other type questions, but it's a blessing that we're able to help, that we have yeah. the knowledge to inspire, to educate, to motivate, and to, um, in a small way, like I started off, man, because um, we already know to make the world a little bit better place and uh, improve these people. And oh man, testimonies and stories, we could both go pretty deep on the changes. And, and I mean, literally the lives that, that have been saved through teaching good quality martial arts. Yeah, I mean, how many yeah. times have any of us had someone walk in our doors and you vaguely recognize them because now they have a beard and they come in and go, I just wanted to thank you very much. I'm like, who are you? And you look at the eyes like, and it's, it's Johnny who you taught when he was eight years old. Yeah. You know, you taught him for five years and he just wanted to thank you. And that's like, wow, that's that's pretty cool. You made yeah. someone who, who gets remembered. I think that's, that's pretty neat. Yeah, right. What do we leave him behind? You know, like you said, if we can make a positive impact on one person, you know that that change that, that has an impact on the world. And I think that's pretty that's pretty powerful because the world's pretty ugly right now. Yeah, definitely is. Well, I'm glad we're able to do what we do. Well, talk to us a little bit about uh, you know I guess on the business side. I, I know that you run a top martial arts school, uh, successful business uh, in the, in the martial arts industry one of the top in the nation and uh, there's a different type struggle there's different type controversies at time uh, work mindset so running a martial arts business what have you learned and what are some of your biggest challenges 
because you're a black belt doesn't mean that you know how to run a business. Uh, the first thing we worked, we learned right away was <laughs> you're, you're a white belt in business. You know, you can teach a few students, but if you want to do it for a living, I don't even say for a living, but if you're serious, if, if yeah, if, you, if you're just doing this as a part-time thing and, and you just want to teach these five people, that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with that at all, at all. Uh, but if this is something that you want to do for a living, you know, you, you have to really learn how to serve people. And, uh, uh, and if you're going to be doing this, you know, you, you can't just do, well, David likes doing these three things and someone else might like, like this. Sometimes you got to give them what they want before you can give them what they need. You know, you, you have to learn to be flexible. You have to read a lot. So in order to, you know, to have a successful martial arts business or any business for that matter, if you're doing with people, the first thing is you have to really understand people. And you got to want to be you want to be there with them and they're coming for something it might not be what you like in martial arts you know, and they don't always learn the way you learned you know and it can't be well my instructor taught me this way and that's how i'm teaching you how many people have parents who, who were awful parents because their parents were awful to them you know so you can't you can't you got to break that at some point and uh you know if you want to have if you want to really reach a lot of people and truly impact people in martial arts, you have to learn that, say you have 30 people on a mat, you can have five different ways of learning, and then you have like all these different personalities, you know, five different ways of learning, but then you have different ways of, of that information being absorbed and who do you partner with and how do you get everybody to work together? You, you gotta be able to look at your whole group, know your audience, change the pace, change the drill. You know, you might have to change your whole lesson plan at different points just because of who's there. And that takes a lot of learning about people, developing a culture. If you want to develop all these people, you really have to understand that it is not about you. It is about the people you're serving. And I'm not being preachy. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not the David Pantano show. You know, there's all these people. I'm a leader. I'm in this world. If you're a leader and you don't have any followers, you're just taking a walk alone. You're not leading anybody. So, you know, I'm, I'm so great. I'm the best teacher ever. Where are your students? Uh, they, they don't want to work hard. Maybe you can't convey how to work hard. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, people, a lot of people think that if you have a successful school, you're a sellout. Now, when I was first in this industry and I was struggling and I was broke and I had 20 students and I thought, well, if those other guys, they have more students than me, it's because they're selling out. And the truth was, you know, I remember people, if someone didn't want to get the, if someone couldn't get the drill or didn't want to listen, you know, I would, I would just ignore them, you know, kick them out of town. Listen, you're not a right fit for us. Instead of learning what would make this kid, what makes this kid tick? How can I get him to want to listen? Or how can I get this adult to be confident enough to want to spar, to want to work on it, why it's important to him or her for that matter? You know, and you, you think about it. It's, it's like you are guiding people onto a mat where they're scared to go. They're scared to look, adults are worse than kids. They're scared to look stupid. It's, it's a juggling act. Every day, you know, someone's not getting along with that student now. This guy got hit in class. He doesn't want to work with him. How do you get everybody to learn, want to work together? It's so it's really about the art of working with people. And the only way you can do that to have a successful school is really to learn and grow constantly. I have books upon books at my house that I'm reading all the time because you're constantly evolving. Wow, that was a lot. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> oh, you did, man. And uh, yeah, and, and I know the sa same way and the same thing. Yeah, it's more about them than it is about you and to appeal to the masses and what they want and to be able to adapt, shift, make those changes. And, you know, that way didn't work. Let's find another way of teaching the technique or, you know, addressing or finding a solution to the problem because problems have solutions, but it might not be the way that you started with or your way. So definitely knowing your audience is a very important thing. Knowing your business, you have a successful business because you're able to do that. I think we both come from a, a generation, a time, and uh, where you would get those good martial arts instructors, hardcore, traditional, old school. They would literally brag about, I've been teaching martial arts 30, 40, 50 years, and I have two black belts. Like as if that was a, a bragging right. Now, I mean, again, I respect that's your goal. You want to teach in your garage and just have two or three students. And, you know, man, that's good, good students, I bet, right? But to uh, take it to the next level, I think I would rather help 300 people than three. 
you know, because of what your impact and what you're able to do. And, you know, but you do see the other extreme. I have 3,000 black belts. Well, can they fight? Can they protect themselves? Do they know what they're doing? So it's, a balance. What you... it's a balance. It's a balance. Because we want to produce a lot of good quality black belts and that continue their training. They look for the next goal. It's not just getting your black belt and you're done. That's a problem. That's a problem that's tough to tough to fix. I'm, I'm about to test um, some black belts. We do one black belt test a year. And already, you know, it's that, man, I want to keep these guys training for not my benefit, for their benefit, that there is so much more after that. That's an accomplishment. You should be proud, dude. You reached your black belt. You made that commitment. You reached it. But let's become a black belt. Let's grow into it. Let's relearn. And let's start understanding all these things we memorize. <laughs> you know, and that's the knowledge after black belt. And, um, how do you do that? How do you try to convince and preach the preach of continuing after you reach that level? You know, we use so many sayings. I mean, you're not going to get your driver's license and then never drive, you know, you, you, you have to become that black belt, man. And it's a challenge sometimes. Right. And again, it could be parents. Well, oh yeah. As parents, if they finish this, sorry, we're going to do something else. It's like, you know, that's like, I finished that book. I never have to read again. But what I tell people is it's like uh, law and medicine. It's called a practice. So you get your degree. Now, here's the thing. Right? All those people, they graduate medical school or law school. Someone graduated number 700. You just don't want that doctor. But they graduated because they fulfilled the requirements. But there's you are practicing that medicine evolves thank god or else we'd all have more problems laws change and evolve so it's a practice and when i explain to people when they get their black belt i'm like you you, you want to understand this is really the beginning well what do you mean i'm a black belt now yeah you've reached this level and now we want to hone those skills we want to internalize those skills and you've worked so hard to get here do you not want to go anywhere else do you not want to improve it's not even about getting more rank that's that's not what it's about it, it's about the journey of always pursuing something learning how about learning how to do the same thing ten thousand times the ten thousand hour theory to become great at it yet you see messi the soccer player ronaldo they don't get extra balls on a field and extra nets they do the same drills that that they do that the 10 year olds do up here but they've done it for so long the joy is in getting better at that when you have kids who are black belts it's like okay well listen you want those skills to be there for you you have to practice and you know now let's let's hone those skills Every, i think it's all about just taking things to the next level that's it's really what it is and if you really love it why would you want to stop it like you all right you're in little league you finished little league oh no i don't want to go on to the, the next league you know i i, I did little league you know, it's challenging it's harder you get better that, that's what it is like football all these things you know, you you keep doing them. art. You keep doing it and challenge yourself in different mediums, different things to get better. You know, because that's the joy is growth. That goes back to the quitting thing we talked about earlier. People quit things because it's hard it, it, to continue. Uh, I made it here. What now? I made it to the mountaintop. What next? We're finding another mountain. <laughs> you know? That's really what yeah. it's all about. Yeah, I agree, man. Yeah, people want to dabble into a lot of things. So then there are those jack of all trades and master of none. Yeah, you could dabble to find a passion. But, you know, if that's a passion, you know, s stay there for a minute, right? <laughs> stay there. I have a friend, he he teaches out of his garage. She, he, but he told me, he's like, I just want to teach who I want to teach. If you, and I was like, that's fine. You know, Bruce Lee taught people in his backyard. It doesn't matter. If you're impacting somebody, great. But yeah, if you do it on a mass scale, it's like when and people go, well, look out, look at all your students. When you were when you first started out, all your students were killers. You go to the gym. I was just at the gym earlier today. The same people when I go there every day at the same time are there. They are dedicated. But that group of people is not the ones that pay all that, that pay all the bills or fill the building. There are the people that are always dedicated, will come there if it's if it's snowing, whatever, and there's people that They'll come three times a week. They want to get in shape. They enjoy it. And there's some people that come in here and take a selfie. They talk to people. You know, there's, but they're getting something out of it. Not everybody wants to dig deep and be a black belt. Some people are here for different reasons. But you should be able to provide the highest level of anything for each one of those students. 
You know, you should be able, whatever it is that they're looking for, they, that should be provided for them. The hardcore, the people that are just like, I like it, but I'm not too, I'm, I don't want to go too crazy. Everybody should, they should all have something, but there always should be standards. Yeah, and, and you got to put the break, you got to puff those breaks. You know, when it, you, not everybody can get to the next level. In fact, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself, but if you want to get to that next level, Johnny or ma'am, you're going to have to do this, this, and this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that part is over. Yeah, yeah. And that works good for us because we can, we can have some different programs, some different special teams within our school, some different classes. What, who comes on Friday is this special group, whatever it may be, so that people are able to choose their level of experience a little bit better. You know, orientation. We have like a basic training, maybe black belt, premier, leadership, fight team. You got a small group of people that want full contact fighting. So, but and you can um, Yeah, yeah, small group. <laughs> It's usually a small group, but a really dedicated group, hopefully at least. Right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Fight, fighters is a whole other talk, right? But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good stuff, man. Uh, well, a couple of questions. How about your favorite martial arts style, your favorite system and why? Well, I would say that my two, sty- my two favorite styles are the ones that I do. Uh, you know, I, I, I love Kempo. I love Krav Maga. I, I, I'm starting to really like uh, Jiu-Jitsu. I, I do very little of it, grappling, but there's a need for it. There is definitely, you need to have a balance of everything, you know. You need to have a balance. Um, what I love about Kempo and about Krav Maga is that it's, uh, I'm not big on mindless conformity. I'm not a very rigid kind of person. And I started in boxing, bullied as a kid, and I, I didn't like that. But like I said, when someone grabbed my wrist that one day, uh, I needed something that was versatile. When I was boxing, we used to shadow box, move around, hit the bag, and we're sparring, we're moving around. So I didn't want something that is very rigid. I didn't want something that was very overly choreographed. And people think Kempo is choreographed. And so it's just, it's no different than a boxing combination. Jab, cross, hook, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, we weave, weave, slip, quarter turn. And it can become elaborate, but then when you spar, it all comes apart. You use things when they when you need them. Use those tools as you need them. There's no order. It's an education. I just like the the freedom in those two arts to be able to take things apart. It's not rigid. Put them back together. I like a flow. You, you know what I'm saying? I, I like that. I like the way it looks. I like the, I like that it's practical. Uh, and some people love something that's uh, just the way of peace, or they. They love, you know, uh, they, they love doing the same thing every day. I like taking things apart. And a lot of my black belts, I say, here's the threat we're working with. Now work off of it. If they're having trouble with it, go back to the base technique. Here's three techniques relevant to that threat. Hands and feet. It's close quarter combat, uh, mm-hmm. close quarter uh, techniques as far as, you know, the distance ranges mm-hmm. where some are, are not. Yeah, that's what I like about it. You know, it's, yeah. um, and, and it, it, it evolves. I, right. I like that it evolves. It's not the same way yeah. it was a thousand years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and, and there's, there's, like you said, there's the good, bad, ugly, and everything. There's, there's people I've seen videos of people doing my art, the same art that I do, and if I didn't know anything, I'd be like, I would never want to do that. That's ridiculous. Right, right. Yeah, hundred percent, man, hundred percent. Uh, oh, let me kind of close with a, I call a silly question, but I, I like it because I get different answers from people about it. What is the best martial arts technique if you had to know one technique of all martial arts what would it be a preemptive attack Mm -mm. i like it yep a preemptive i mean awareness is not the technique so knowing when to leave all right that's fine but a preemptive attack it's always better to attack first when you feel when you know you're when the threat is imminent than waiting to try and defend against oh no what's gonna throw yeah i love it preemptive we're gonna have a video on some of that Cool. Strike well, first, Mr. Strike David. First, no first. That's right. That's right. That's right. Cobra Kai. Hey, I really appreciate the time, the uh, the uh, motivation, the information, man. I love you, bro, and we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah. So let's stay in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you.